You have now learned the legal concepts of the insurance contract. Let's review some of the key areas from this section that will help you prepare to pass. Insurance contract. Insurance policies are legal contracts. Contract law defines a contract as a legally binding agreement between two or more parties where a promise of benefits is exchanged for a consideration. In order for an insurance contract to be legally binding, it must have four essential elements. Offer and acceptance, consideration, legal purpose, and competent parties. Offer and acceptance. An offer is made when the applicant submits an application for insurance to the insurance company. The offer is accepted after it has been approved by the insurance company's underwriters. Consideration. A consideration is something of value that each party gives to the other. The consideration on the part of the insured is the payment of premium. The consideration on the part of the insurance company is a promise to pay in the event of loss. Legal purpose. An insurance contract must be legal and not against public policy. If an insurance contract has an insurable interest and the insured has provided written consent, it has legal purpose. Competent parties. All parties must be of legal competence, meaning they must be of legal age, mentally capable of understanding the terms, and not under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And to review, a legal contract must have offer and acceptance, considerations, competent parties, and legal purpose. Special features of insurance contracts. Allatory. Insurance contracts are allatory, which means that there is not an equal exchange of value. The premiums paid by the insured are small in relation to the amount that will be paid by the insurance company in the event of a loss. For example, if you purchase a life insurance policy worth $100,000 and your payments were $50 per month, you die three months later. You have only paid the insurance company $150, but they will give your beneficiary $100,000. Adhesion. Adhesion is also known as take it or leave it agreements because they're prepared by only one party, the insurance company. They are accepted or rejected by the other party, the applicant, with no negotiations or changes. Unilateral. A unilateral contract is a one-sided agreement in which only one party, the insurance company, is legally bound to do anything. The policy owner is under no legally binding promise to pay premiums. However, the insurance company is legally bound to pay losses covered by the policy. Please note, if the policy owner does not pay their premiums, the insurance company does have the right to terminate the insurance policy. Personal contract. Insurance contracts are personal contracts between an individual and the insurance company and cannot transfer ownership without the insurance company's written consent. Conditional. Insurance contracts are conditional because certain conditions must be met by all parties when a loss occurs. Otherwise, the contract would not be legally enforceable. Meaning that if the policy owner is past due on his payments and the insurer dies, the insurance company does not have to pay the death benefit because a condition was not met. Valued or indemnity. Life insurance is a valued contract which pays a stated amount regardless of the actual loss incurred. Health insurance is an indemnity contract. It only pays the amount equal to the loss. With health insurance, you're not allowed to make a profit. Utmost good faith. Utmost good faith implies there will be no fraud, misrepresentation, or concealment between the parties as it pertains to insurance policies. Both the insurance company and the policy owner must be able to rely on the other for relevant and accurate information. The policy owner is expected to provide accurate information on the application for insurance. The insurance company must clearly and truthfully describe policy features and benefits, and they must not conceal or mislead the insured. Warranties. Warranties are statements that are guaranteed to be true and are part of the legal contract. Representation. Representations are statements believed to be true, to the best of one's knowledge, but they are not guaranteed to be true for insurance purposes. Representations are the answers the applicant for insurance gives to the questions on the insurance application. Untrue statements on the application are considered misrepresentations 
and could void the contract. Concealment. Concealment is a legal term for the intentional withholding of information, which is crucial in making a decision. With insurance, concealment is a withholding of information by the applicant that results in an inaccurate underwriting decision that can void the policy. Insurable interest. Insurable interest is the most important aspect for establishing a legal insurance contract. To purchase insurance, the policy owner must face the possibility of losing money or something of value when a loss happens. This is called insurable interest. In life insurance, insurable interest must exist between the policy owner and the person being insured at the time of application. Please note that insurable interest only needs to exist at the time of the original application, but does not need to exist throughout the remainder of the policy. Now let's learn about the agent's authority. An agent is a licensed insurance producer who's been appointed to represent an insurance company. As a representative of the insurer, agents are given certain authority to perform acts on behalf of the insurance company. In the insurance business, an agent is always considered to be acting on behalf of the insurance company, also referred to as the principal. There are three types of agent authority. Express. Express authority is the authority granted to the agent by the principal, which is the insurance company, as written in the agency contract. Implied. Implied authority is authority not expressed or written into the agent contract, but which the agent is assumed to have in order to transact the business of insurance for the principal. It comes from the express authority, since not every single detail of an agent's authority can be spelled out in the agent's written contract. Apparent. Apparent authority is the appearance or the assumption of authority given based on the action or words of the principal. For example, when an insurance company furnishes an agent with a rate book, applications, and sales literature, the insurance company cannot later deny that a relationship existed. As review, the three kinds of agent authority are express, implied, and apparent. Other legal concepts. Waiver. A waiver is the act of voluntarily giving up a legal right, claim, or privilege. Estoppel. Estoppel is the legal process used to prevent a party from reclaiming a right or privilege that was already waived. Estoppel is a legal consequence of the waiver. Parole evidence rule. The parole evidence rule prevents parties from changing the meaning of a written contract by trying to introduce oral or written statements made before the formation of the contract. Fully understanding these key topics are essential as you prepare to pass.